Hello everybody, this is Julia from Just One More Card and I have a new video for you today where I'm combining watercolors and colored pencils and I'm coloring these cute stamps by Whimsy Stamps. I want to start by showing you which paper I'm using. It's from Dela Rowney and here you can see what paper it is exactly and uh, I found that this works really well with colored pencils, polychromos, prisma colors um, and it's quite affordable actually in Germany. I'm going to be using the Kitten Kindness stamps by Whimsy Stamps. These are mounted red rubber stamps and they come in this block and all you need to do is just grab a pair of scissors and cut out the stamp that you want to use. It's absolutely easy, you're not damaging your stamp at all as long as you don't cut into it. And it has still has this backing paper because it's um, completely new but it's already mounted so you see that when you get the stamps you just cut it out and then you can use it, even with your Misty. So yet there's nothing else that you have to do. You just have to grab the stamp and start stamping. So I stamped it here with my favorite things um, licorice hybrid ink. And for the first layer of color, I'm going to be using my ink tense pencils, but you can use any um, watercolor that you like. And the reason uh, why I'm doing this is because I want to have a very light coat of color so I don't have to apply that many layers with my colored pencils. It's simply faster um, to use watercolor for um, a very light coat of color than having to apply one or two layers of colored pencils. This paper is not really meant for watercoloring though, so I have to say that uh, right out at the top. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm applying some color, I'm picking the color up with my brush directly from the tip of the pencil. I'm putting the color down on the paper and then I'm using a minimal, minim, minimal, minimum, very little water. Um, to soften out the edges here. You don't want to use too much water because this is not watercolor paper and you run the risk of peeling or damaging the paper. Um, so you could also use watercolor paper um, with, your water, with your colored pencils by the way, so that would also work. But um, I didn't think of that before I started. So I'm working section by section and you can see that I'm really carefully only applying a tiny little bit of um, of the color and that I'm smoothing it out and I'm going back here into some areas to darken up these areas because um, for example the arm of the cat here it will cast a shadow underneath as well as you know um, um, showing the roundedness of the tail and here assuming that the light source is in the in the top right um, the left of the head of the cat would be in darkness would be in darkness. That sounds so ominous. Anyhow, so you can see what I'm doing here and just very, very carefully applying the color. The The thought here really is to just have a tiny little bit of color in the darkest areas so that I can then color more, like faster and more easily with my colored pencils. That's the entire idea behind it. Because if you've watched my um, coloring videos for the, for the colored pencils, you know that I usually apply at least three layers of color, sometimes up to five or six. So, you know, that takes a while. Also, don't forget the details, like here, the fingers and the paws. You can see that I'm adding a lot of color into the shadow areas where one finger would cast a shadow um, on the finger beneath, and then I'm smoothing it out, and you can see just how much more dimensional this paw looks now. So it's very important to think of those, um, um, to think of those little details because they will really make your image come to life. That was the cat finished and then I continued on the cupcake and I'm basically doing the very same thing here. I'm applying the color into the area that I deem darkest um, and then I'm just smoothing the color out. Again, very little water. If you're using watercolor paper, you could use more water, but I would caution against it even there because you don't want the color to spread too far. You just want to have the color a little bit in the darkest areas, but keep the lightest areas as light as you possibly can so you have room for that highlight. Because remember, I'm still going to go over this with my colored pencils, so I'm not even done yet. I will intensify this these colors a lot. So I don't need to worry about adding too much color right now. Of course, you could also leave it just like it is right now. If you prefer a softer coloration, you could just leave it like this. But you know me, you know, I like high contrast and you know, everything has to pop. Um, I sometimes wish I could just stop and, you know, enjoy the softer coloration, but somehow that's not for me. I don't know. I just don't, I just can't stop. <laughs> As for the brushes, I'm not using a super expensive brush here. It's, um, it's like a student-grade brush. 
maybe cost two or three euros, not more like that. Um, so, you know, just don't worry about having anything fancy. And now I'm switching over to my um, Polychromos pencils. You can use your Prismacolor pencils or whatever else you have. Don't go out buying something new, just try whatever you have. And you can see I started by applying the darkest color into the shadow areas and then going over the darkest color with my mid-tone color and using small circular motions to blend this out. Um, and then I'm going coming back in with my lightest color and you can see that I don't even need to cover the entire rest of the these folds because I already used uh, my watercolor to have a coat of color there. So then I'm switching over to the cupcake wrapper, darkest color, then I'm applying a mid-tone, then I'm grabbing my white. This is actually the Caran d'Ache white because it's softer and it, you know, it blends out more, uh, more smoothly. Mid-tone color, then I'm even using a, a, a highlight color here and then I'm coming back in with the white and smoothing it out. And that's basically all I'm doing for the rest of the cupcake here. What you want to do is when you work with your colored pencils, again, I can absolutely recommend the coloring classes by Kid and Clouder. I will link to them in the video description below um, because I learned all that I know about coloring from Elise from Kid and Clouder. So if you um, want to take a class there, just you know leave Alice a note that I send you and I get a tiny commission at no extra cost to you. So it's not going to cost you anything extra. But everything I know about coloring with colored pencils, I've learned from her and it's just... It's helped me so much. Um, for example, what is really important, and I kind of forgot this here in the in the very beginning, that's why I had to go over um, the cat quite a few times, is when you apply a coat of color with your pencils towards the edge where you stop with that color and then continue with the next color, towards that edge, lighten your pressure because that will automatically lighten the color as well and it will make it so much easier to blend into the next color. This is especially important if you blend towards a highlight. And I'm tr here I'm basically trying to blend towards the very light gray. And you can see that at the very left, um, it's still very dark and it's kind of a harsh transition. It's not a soft transition. So I had a little bit too much pressure on my pencil um, when I applied the darkest colors. And now I have to go over it quite a few times to smooth that out. So I'm coming back with black actually here and just adding a tiny little bit of black in. Um, and then I'm coming back with my um, gray pencils and smoothing that out. But again, it's very important that you um, monitor the pressure that you apply. Don't apply too much pressure, especially on, um, on the very first layers, because if you apply too much pressure, you're smoothing out the paper and then it can't take the pigment of the other layers anymore. So rather apply one more layer than um, flattening out the paper too soon. And coloring with pencils takes a little bit of time and patience, so it's not as fast as coloring with watercolors, for example. So you just have to make the time for it, but it's, you know, it's very relaxing just want to do something for fun. Now to put the card together, here's my card base and I added a piece uh, of pattern paper on the edge. I'm using my um, tonic uh, grid here, uh, the, my working surface, just to make sure that I have a straight strip of double-sided adhesive and then I am pouring some um, glitter on it. This is the Nouveau glitter also from Tonic Studios. Just pouring this very generously on the um, on the double-sided adhesive, and I'm gonna funnel. I funnel uh, all the excess um, glitter back into the jar, and then I'm just using my finger to rub the glitter into the double-sided adhesive so it will stick and it won't come off after that. So you don't have a mess in the envelope, and then I'm just adding my colored piece here on top. You don't even need much more because I want the focus to be on the coloring that I did, not on anything else. So I'm actually keeping it quite simple, even left out the sentiment, so I can add it later depending on what I need. Here you have a close-up look of the glitter strip that I added um, on the edge. And I think it's just a, you know, a nice accent. Here is a close-up of the coloration that I did. You can see that I even added a few accents here with some Nouveau drops. And here is the entire card.
there you go. So I hope you've enjoyed this coloration tutorial. You can, as always, find all the products that I've used in the video description below. And here are some more videos for you to check out. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll catch you again soon. Bye-bye!